So with the back cinch, and then he saw the rope, and seeing a rope on the ground should not be a reason for a nine-year-old horse to, to lose it. So I'm here with Pam today, and uh, Pam has a horse that's kind of new to her, and you recently had a challenge <laughs> with him, yes. we'll put it that way, that we're going to talk about. So can you just tell, tell everybody a little bit about why you called me here and why we're doing this evaluation today? Sure. I'm fairly new to your uh, material. I think it was last summer that I came to one of your clinics, and then not well, in February, um, we had some beautiful days, so I was like, okay. I've got goals. We're going to work on some things. And um, so I probably now I know that I did not prepare him. I think that's how you say it. Um, but So what happened? <laughs> yeah. So I did some warm up, plenty of what I felt was plenty of warm up, but um, got on after doing some warm up, even in saddle, extra warm up, and did half a lap in my round pen. And there was a rope sitting in the snow and I, he spooked at the rope. He went sideways. I'm not really sure. I don't, I'd, I've been bucked before and I've been bucked off before. So that didn't scare me, but I don't know what I did with my hands. I don't think I did this, but I was trying to bring him around, but he just began to buck and he bucked multiple times. And it was, I was like, I am not coming off this horse. I am going to manage it. We're going to recover. It's going to be good. And eventually I was just sideways and there was no. Yeah. recovering and I but thought you made eight no, seconds you made eight seconds at least I think I did my eight <laughs> seconds dang it all isn't it amazing how much we remember in yeah. a split second when yeah. things are happening fast but so Clancy is new to you mm -hmm. and he's when did you buy him how many how long have you had him and how old is he right he is just about to turn nine so he was like eight and a half when I got him bought him August of 2021 here we are in March of 22 so I've had him you know, I didn't do the calculation, but not long, not long. Okay. And you know, how many rides before this, we'll call it the situation. Right. How many rides did you have on him? Successful rides before that? Right. Probably 10, maybe eight oh, to so 10. You didn't, ride it, you didn't ride him a whole lot in no, that time period. I, I have a okay. filly I'm also working on and you know, just not enough hours yet. All right. So, so uh, Pam is a member of the Patreon page. And so she hit me up on that and said, Ryan, I need some help. And I said, okay, hold your horses, <laughs> wait, wait for me to get back. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I was coming to a clinic near her and we, she was able to bring her horse here for an evaluation. So I asked you not to ride your horse for the past month. Right. Um, have you been handling him on the ground and that sort of thing? No, I thought you had asked me also not to handle him. Okay. I, I don't remember exactly. I don't remember exactly what I said, but, but no, I, I didn't, I didn't want her to get on again and have something happen. Cause I was going to be here soon enough that it wasn't, it didn't matter. So we're going to work with him today and find out. And what we need to know is, was this kind of a one-time incident, knowing that riding horses is not a very safe thing to do in general? And it can happen. It can happen to any, any of us that, that ride horses. Or is this something that could be perpetual where he, he has a, a spot in there that needs to be worked through or, or got, get him comfortable with? And so we're going to do this evaluation and find out what we got. Sound good? Yes, thank you. All right, we'll get Clancy out. Wanted to take a quick second to let you guys know, if you want to see more great content, you can check out my Patreon page. I got a ton of other videos on there, as well as I will answer specific questions about you and your horse. You can send me videos for coaching, or you can request specific videos for me to make. It's a great value at $10 a month. Hope to see you guys on there. I'll leave a link in the description below. Uh, so those of you that have been following my channel for a while, you've noticed, uh, you'll no have noticed a theme with these evaluations where I test the horse on some some common um, things. So one of the things that I test on is rhythmic motion and seeing how well they handle uh, pressure. Now, a horse will mostly associate this with pressure, but this is not pressure. Pressure is if I was asking him to move from it. So it's pressure now, okay? But then when I bring my energy down and I move this, this is not pressure. So what I'm getting at is a lot of horses, um, we want horses to understand that if we're calm, they should be calm but that's something we have to make sure they know. <laughs> we have to teach that to them. They don't come out of the box like that. So this is the first thing that I'm gonna check him on is, if I'm calm, is he calm? So, and we wanna test that with a little bit of duress, right? We wanna put him under a little bit of pressure. So I'm calm and relaxed. I'm not asking him to move in any way, but the flag is being noisy. And so he's reacting to this a fair bit. So to me, if a horse reacts to the flag without me asking him in any way, that could relate to if I was sitting on him and somebody's else's horse started getting bothered, the dog came running out from underneath the fence, the, 
you know, whatever happened, the horse could react to some other outside circumstance, right? And so the flag is meant to be um, a little bit more dramatic, you know, and not just, you know, I don't want to, I don't want him to, to know if he's surface calm. <laughs> I want to know if he's really calm and calm under some things that might happen because when we're riding a horse, we don't have control over every variable. Now we're in an indoor arena here that's really quiet. Um, so we have a relatively contained area compared to being in a trail or something like that. But just the, my point is we want to make sure the horse is really prepared um, to handle a little pressure. So we can't, we got to build some depth of this, not just surface level. And now he's handling this pretty well. And this is a good flag. It's really noisy. So he's handling that pretty well. So now I'm going to switch it. And now it's going to be rhythmic pressure. So that means now I'm going to ask him to move. So I'm going to bring my life up and I will touch him softly. And so I can already tell there's a little bit of a hole in his understanding because he didn't, right off the bat, he didn't quite understand the difference between me working the flag to be noisy and me asking him to yield. In other words, when I first moved the flag, he ran away from it when I wasn't asking him to move. Now when I am asking him to move, he was just kind of standing there looking at it. So that's a little bit of a hole in his understanding. Now you might say, well, maybe he's trained differently. Maybe, you know, somebody trained him to do it the opposite or something. The way I'm presenting it to him is in a way that theoretically would be more natural to a horse. It's natural for a horse to um, follow energy, life up and life down. In other words, a horse is, um, genetically designed to read, does the lion look hungry and is stalking the prey or is the lion, lion sunbathing and, you know, not, not after them at all because they can't, they have to be able to let their guard down sometimes, right? Sometimes they have to go to the water hole and drink. And so it is natural for them to read our, our intention. We just have to build depth of it by practicing. So now I switched it to rhythmic motion. So it's coming from the ground up to his hip. He's handling that really well. You know, I was talking to Pam earlier and I had her play with the horse a little bit just to see how she was interacting with him. And she, I asked her to show me some of his trouble spots that she was aware of. And he didn't really have any trouble with them today. <laughs> and that tells me that he's already in a better frame of mind today than he was on the day that we had the situation, <laughs> as we'll call it. Um, and, and part of that is just be, the ability to be able to read the horse, you know, it's impossible to prepare a horse for any situation that could possibly come up. Um, so there is a level of responsibility on the rider to be aware of their horse's temperament at that moment. And I was just sharing with her that there's days where there's a horse that I maybe was previously riding that I go, today's not a good day to try that. You know, it's not a matter of could I ride him or not. It just... I might end up getting them more bothered or worried about something if I had just, than if I just leave it alone. So not every moment is a training moment. You want to pick your battles. You know, pick the things that you, you feel like are achievable. And, you know, another way to say that is set the situation up for success or set it up to be safe. So I'm just going to push him around a little bit and see how he responds. There we go. He's getting a little better. I also want to see how he handles speed a little bit. So not bad. He's wanting to break to a trot. You can see his tail elevated. The tail that, that he has right now, we call that a J tail. That means that there's tension. We also know that there's tension by how high his head is and how braced he was under his neck. And so even though he didn't do anything crazy, he didn't run off bucking and he's not whinnying out and doing all the things. And it, so in other words, he's relatively quiet. And these are the harder ones to read is these ones that are more introverted about how they feel. See, now he... He's barely a J-tail. If I get him going, there's a really clear J-tail. Can you see it, Pam? So again, it's a subtle sign, but that little J-tail that he's got says there's a lot of tension in there. And so when, I, when I'm in deliberately kind of exposing a horse to a little bit of pressure to make sure that they're safe to ride, I want them to have a quicker, we'll call it recovery. So right now I got him revved up a little bit just by flagging him into that canner. 
and he's not dialing down right away. He's staying with his head elevated and a little bothered. I want that recovery time to be quicker. I want him to come back to me faster. Um, so he's, by, by doing nothing here, he's starting to wind down. Um, you can see the tail has, has settled back. He's quiet again. But I would like that to be just a little bit quicker. Because it's not a matter of will your horse ever get bothered or not. If you're riding you know, horses that are younger than 25 years old, they, uh, they will get bothered at times. And so it's not, that's not the question. The question is, what does it take to get them unbothered? And how far, how bothered do they get? What is, you know, a horse can be really mentally bothered, but not necessarily leave, leave the situation, as in bolting, bucking, rearing, something that would be hazardous to our health. So when I'm training them, I'm trying to show them to learn how to handle pressure and handle situations to where they can recover themselves. And so to me, that's a little bit of what he needs to learn is that <clears throat> it should feel better to him when he tries to act like a partner. So when he got bothered out there, I kind of left the pressure on with the flag and I left him cantering there a little bit. So like right now, we'll just leave this here a little bit. And I want to see how long it takes him. And now he is wanting to stop, but when I have a more introverted horse, I, they can slow down, but they can't stop because they'll actually use that against us a little bit. A lot of times the reason they want to slow down is because they don't like the feeling of having to take a deep breath. <laughs> and uh, they, they, they hold tension in their rib cage as well, and they quit breathing. And those shallow breaths is what increases their heart rate. And so you can see him, um, you know, he's defecating there. And so he's, he's definitely nervous, even though he doesn't look super, super bothered right now. Um, you know, I could show you a different personality horse that would look way bothered and might be less bothered than he is. Um, so we got to be careful with these introverted horses that we are still reading what, what they're actually feeling in that moment. But they are harder to read. You know, it's really no different than people. You know, if you have a real extroverted person in your life, <laughs> you, you'll know where you stand with them at all times, right? If you have a real introverted person, sometimes they're harder to read. At what's like, are you okay? Are we all, you know, are we good? <laughs> are you not good? And it's like, well, actually, I got some stuff to tell you, <laughs> you know. So there, he recovered pretty well. But if you watch his nostrils, I don't know if the camera can pick this up, but they're flaring really quickly and he's breathing. So he, he needs to breathe now because he's moved his feet a little bit, but it, he, he needs to take deeper breaths. So I haven't heard him sit, slow down and take a big, a big breath. And I haven't heard him make this noise and blow out. And those would be a couple signs that we're looking for to know that he's really uh, relaxing. Yes, he's got to do it while moving forward because he's more introverted. In other words, a horse that is hard to get them to move their feet, I want them to find relief moving forward. If I have a horse that's easy to move their feet, I want them to find relief slowing down and standing still. So it's kind of the opposite. Now there he softened his head and neck a little bit. He went to make a real subtle lick and chew. Um, and so I'm putting him on this, uh, th what I call the three circle game here where I push his hindquarters to the outside. And I'm trying to get him to find this as a spot to get relief. There, his head's lowering a little bit. Good. Now, there's also levels of comfort, right? He has not gotten real comfortable. He's just mildly okay. <laughs> you know, in other words, earlier he would have left the room. Right now he's still in the room, but he's still, he's still a little bothered. So I'm just going to work at this for a bit and uh, we'll kind of see where we see where we can get with it. What I'm going to do though is I'm, I'm going to approach and retreat with speed and then I'm going to slow him down and try to help him get a little relief on the circle. But he need, I feel like he needs to move his feet a little bit and bend his ribs and hopefully start to take deeper breaths. That's, that's the big thing I'm after right now. And you see the head kind of coming down, softening there. Now there he went to stop, but you see how he slowed down and kind of melted? He didn't 
er, and, and do a herky-jerky pivot. Again, it's a little thing, but he was in a better frame of mind to do the slow down there than when he did the herky-jerky stop and face up like he did earlier. So. I like this lope better. The tail's jade, but it's the, there's a little bit more rhythm. Yeah, not as much tension there. Everything's just a little softer. This, this lope would feel. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gathering that he, he, he wants to be good, but he, he, he did get scared, you know. But some horses, don't tr don't have as much try as others do i feel like some some are more committed to their idea of being skeptical he i don't get the impression that he's super committed to it but he 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 is getting getting bothered obviously you know one of the things i try to determine is it a no or is it a i can't and at him at the moment rider and walking was an i can't which for his age and experience level, to me, that seems like a pretty low bar. I would like to see that bar be higher. I know you would too. Like his tolerances weren't very high. Um, but the question is like, what is it going to take to raise those tolerances? Are we talking weeks, months, years? <laughs> you know, and that can help us make some, some decisions. Now see how there, how he's lowering his head down, but he's doing it like quick. Yeah, so this is like a, a, it's a trained response for him to lower his head down. He knows that's the answer, but he doesn't really want to. And there is a massive difference with a horse that's choosing to do a behavior and choosing to put their body in that position versus right now I'm just making him put his head down. He's not choosing to put his head down. There he's starting to choose it. And so it's a mental decision for them, you know, and there's nothing wrong with asking a horse to put their head down. But what I wouldn't do is put him in a situation where I was making him do it right now. I always I want to set it up as much as I can where it's their, their choice. What would that look like if you were making him? Well, I am making him do it. With this, this is me making him put his head down, okay? Um, but what I'm saying is there's even with that, there's a, a difference between he's doing it because only doing it because I'm making him or right now he's saying his comfort level is here. Horses like to have their head up because that means they're alert and looking for danger. So he's okay with yielding this much, but he's not quite okay yet with yielding this much and staying there. See how it just rises back up? And so it's just what it is. It's just kind of kind of feedback. Um, and so you want to come at that from different angles, but you know people have different devices and ways of like setting a, a tie down or something where the horse can be made to only have their head up at a certain height. And that's my point is that if I can get him to choose to keep his head lower, that would be a better result than him only bringing his head down right now because I got five pounds of pressure on the halter. <laughs> Does that make sense? But it's just a, it's like a, a litmus test right now because I'm only using two fingers. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on. I'm just going, what does it take? And it doesn't take a lot, but nonetheless, we don't have a horse that's really, really comfortable enough. To, oh, we're getting there though. We're talking him into it as we go here. And so what I, this is one thing that I would do with him after, theoretically, this is way more comfortable than cantering on that circle. So something that I would just be peppering him in without even thinking about it is whenever he comes in with me and I'm going to pet on him is just asking him to lower his head down and just, just making this a bit of a habit. Just like, Hey, just settle all the way. And I would maybe just play with it here a little bit until he can keep it down there a little longer like that. That's a boy. So he's actually a similar disposition as the horse that I recently posted, the one that would flip over. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Similar, similar personality. He's way less introverted than that one. That one's really introverted. Um, less introverted. Yeah. But still introverted. So um, let's go ahead and saddle him up now. And then um, I'll work with him with my lariat rope and we'll go from there. Moving this to the front cinch um, because you don't want the back cinch that far back. It, it, turn, it can turn into a bucking strap. Wow. <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead. You got the camera rolling? Okay. So something I just noticed with the equipment setup 
This particular cinch is wide. I think it's called a roping cinch and it's wider here. Nothing wrong with that. But it brings this ring closer to the back cinch. This particular keeper is longer and it's actually adjusted, no, it's adjusted at the shortest length, but it's still very long. And so this here, with this here, brings that back cinch pretty far back. And this area of the horse is their flank area and it's way more ticklish than up here. And so um, just equipment wise, first thing I would do is put this up here and uh, shorten that up. Now we could, I probably would switch this out to a shorter one. It should really only be five or six inches long. It doesn't need to be very long. You actually want your cinches to make a V taper here. Okay. So this one should be straight, I say V, but this one should be straight down. And then the back cinch should be angled slightly forward. Oh, okay. Your cinch would have been back here. Actually, it would have been even back. It would, so that could have been an issue. Okay. And maybe, you know, if, if, if he wasn't warmed up as strong, that's one thing. It just could have, could have been enough. Like, mm -hmm. it, it, you were just walking. It's not like you jabbed him and, you know, caused this mistake or something. It could have been a few different things compounding that was just enough, and that could have been one of them. I, I don't know how tight it was because this was set at the last hole. So it was pretty loose, but even if it was just tickling him a little bit, it could have bothered him. Yeah, so if he was concerned about that rope being on the ground and just all those things, and when he jumped, you probably squeezed and, you know. There's, a, there's an old uh, saying, two tights don't make a right. <laughs> and so, well, I guess, wait, well, actually, two tights did make a right. You went right, didn't you? <laughs> Sorry, that's a bad joke. I, sh I shouldn't have shouldn't said it. So you can see just by saddling him, he's more flinchy and goosey. So like that little tight spot there on the ground, if the rider would have reacted to that, that would have been enough to set him off bucking likely. So that's pretty low, pretty low tolerances. And you can, you can see how much more bothered he is just carrying the saddle. Because I would say I didn't do a whole lot on the ground here to get him to move, but he's <laughs> cruising around there pretty good. And you you can also see how much pressure it takes on the halter um, to get him to to stop and turn there to change directions. So it just shows you his intensity level has risen a lot just from having the saddle on. And you always hear me talk about steady pressure being one of the scariest things to horses. But now you add in the rider, that's another layer of pressure that a horse could make a horse feel claustrophobic. Um, because the rider, right, it's got their weight, the legs wrapped around the horse, especially if we got tight when they spooked, which is a very normal reaction. You know, I wouldn't fault you for that. And to me, a horse has to be trained to handle a little bit of that. Like, we're not going to be perfect unless we're bronc riders on staying perfectly loose on a horse. And so we need him to recover from this a little bit, right? He's, he's, tr he's obviously more troubled wearing that saddle now. And even you can see how far back that back cinch is, and I've already shorted it to the front one. So it would have been way back there, <laughs> right? Just for, just for the camera's sake, let me show that. If I were to switch it, how far back that back cinch would go because it, it's further back than I want it already. Um, but let's just see what it would look like here. Yeah, so you could see, I mean, it could go, it can go all the way back to there. That's really far. That's a flank strap. <laughs> so does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So, so that would definitely be an issue. Right. So I didn't take into account the slack and what it could do, really. 
Ex yeah, exactly. So if you if you had it, I'll buckle it loose here, and it actually would go back there easier if it was loose. Oh, yeah. Does that make sense? Um, then this is where I had it. So that's as far back as it can it could go. That's really far back. That's just my point. <laughs> so now we kind of know, right? Yeah, so I knowing he's been started and ridden and my confidence level riding, I can I can already tell you, like I would ride him, but I would feel like I would have to be pretty alert, like of what situations I put him in. But I feel like I could probably get along with because again, I know he's already riding, you've rode him and all this stuff. I would really not have an issue riding him. I would not feel comfortable asking you to ride him right now because he's very just if that's all it took putting a saddle on him to get him that bother head up and racing around and the change that we had just from saddling. That's it. That's all we changed. And this is a horse that's nine. He's not, it'd be different if he was a two year old that had only been ridden three times, you know, that would be fully expected that he would act like that. Um, but given his age and that sort of thing, um, what, so what that leads my recommendation to is I wouldn't recommend you ride him right now. I would recommend we really take the time to fix all this stuff on the ground. So what I don't want this video to be about is, can Ryan ride him or not? It's, that's not the point of the video. It's like, what do we got to do to train this horse to be have higher tolerance levels so that you can ride him? It doesn't help you if I can ride him, but you can't. But to me, we found a lot of holes in his game. Now, none of them are super dramatic, but they're all, to me, just by him grabbing himself on the little circle there, that's the step that happens before the buck, right? So with the back cinch, and then he saw the rope, and Seeing a rope on the ground should not be a reason for a nine-year-old horse to, to lose it <laughs> at a walk. Does that make sense? So for me to have you ride him safely, and I, I don't know how well you ride and that sort of thing, but for your, if I just average my average client, how well they can ride, I wouldn't expect them to ride that. I wouldn't expect them to ride a horse that's as tight as he is that easily. Does that, does that make sense? So the recommendation there is we need to do a lot more groundwork with him and get this going further. Feeling the way he feels today, it, it, the situation now does not surprise me at all. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you've had him from August, and but you haven't rode him very much. And horses can be very different. I just bought one actually. Horses can be different when they're being used every single day on a ranch compared to they sat for months. <laughs> you find out there's a lot more horse there, especially if they didn't get a really good foundation in this horsemanship stuff before they started being ridden, ridden a lot. Um, and that can be a big difference to him because this groundwork where he's learning it, we're teaching him to, that this could mean relax. So the strategies that you've had to help him relax didn't relax him yet because he doesn't know them well enough. So the speech that I gave you about the groundwork is saying that he has to get good enough at this groundwork that it does work to relax him. Right now it does not relax him. It winds him up more. <laughs> does that make sense? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so once it's not new to him, once he learns it, then you can use it as a tool. But right now you're creating the tool or we're creating the tool. You see what I'm saying there? And again, in my world, I'm trying to put foundations on horses so that they already know all this stuff right away. But there's a lot of horses like him out there that um, get started by handy, handy guys that can ride and, and not worry if they get a little bothered here and there. Um, but we need them to, to have higher tolerance levels of things um, when, if they're going to have a bunch of time off. So this would be another big one that I would teach him is can he handle pressure under here? because he's tight around his rib cage, so that's where I want to put the pressure, is down here by his ribs. And I want to side pass him 
until he side passes with rhythm and the feet get synchronized, which is his, his front left and his right hind and his right front and his left hind. Those are the diagonal pairs. And so you see how herky-jerky it is? Just wait for it here until it changes. Oh. There. Oh. There. 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 Almost there. So there's very few steps of the feet being synchronized, which tells us he's not thinking about side passing. <laughs> Once he thinks about side passing, those feet will synchronize. And that's a good way to tell. There's, there's levels to all these things. And there's like, I'm getting him to kind of move sideways, but he's not side passing. There, had a little rhythm. So look for those feet to synchronize. There, there, there. See it? So that meant there was a mind-body connection there. And then we got a lick and chew out of it. So this is where there's levels to this, meaning somebody could just move a horse down the fence back and forth. Or a person can move them back and forth down the fence and release whenever their feet get synchronized. Then the next level is once the feet are synchronized for the head to come down. And that tells us that he's doing the yield with a connection and with softness. The first time he did it, he did it with brace. So he was kind of going sideways, but he was bracy. And that's the difference. You want him to do all these things with softness. I liked how slow his feet got there. I added a little pressure and they stayed slow. That was nice. Let me just check him with the lariat rope real quick. I, I kind of feel like he's in a place where I could ride him right now, but I still want to check out the lariat rope. I'm hoping the lariat rope doesn't bother him too much where I lose the state of mind. When I first saddled him, I lost the state of mind and he wasn't ready to ride. Before the saddle went on, he kind of was ready to ride. So let's watch what changed. And I like to do this with the saddle on more than with the saddle off. I do it a lot of times with the saddle off on a horse that I don't think is going to get too bothered. Oh, yeah, I want to stand back from the panels just a little bit in case he kicks. So he's trying to recover there. He got a little bothered, but then he tried to come back. He, you know, he didn't, it didn't last super long. There's a little lick and chew, so I'll give him a break there. And there he's handling it really well. And I want him to just wear it. That's all I'm looking for right there. So I'm happy with that. He recovered. He got tight and bothered, and then he came through it. And that's what, that's what we need him to do. It's, it's when they get stuck at it that that's when it's going to be a problem. But it is because it's his personality. And that's a great question. So Pam just asked the question. I'll repeat it for those of you that in the comments said, I don't repeat questions that owners ask. She said, is that going to be his reaction all the time where he always, when something's new to brace up? And I said, likely, yes. And now if I owned him and I did this kind of work with him, all the time and he was right in the middle of me working with him all the time maybe not but that's not the reality right he's not going to get five days a week of you know this kind of horsemanship all the time so because of his disposition his innate disposition is what we'd call a right brain introvert and so his default is always going to be to be a little bracy you know you guys have heard of people say like the husband horse or the the bomb proof trail horse kids horses He's not that, right? He, that doesn't mean he couldn't be safe for somebody to ride, but he has a lot of holes in his foundation. And so there's a lot of things that trouble him. He still has not blown out. So we've only got him kind of surface level relaxed, right? We don't have depth of it. We just have one or a two out of 10. Like we don't even have like a five or a six. Maybe we have, I think exaggerating, we probably have like a three or four. 
if he would blow out, we'd probably have like a six out of 10 being relaxed. And we haven't quite got that. But because he's licking and chewing, I'm going to give him that, that four. Um, so, so yeah, his default will still, still be that. So Yeah. Do you know what bit he was wrote in? Because he seemed quite reactive to this one. <clears throat> you notice how high his head got when we thought about riding him, stepping on him, and that those are all little things that a lot of people get on them, you know, and it's just a normal thing. But it also means there is a little bit of tension there that that horse is hanging on to. So I'm gonna try to just sit here a little bit and let him just let him just decompress. I like that his ears are going forward and they're not thinking about me. So what I'm what I'm looking for in these situations is going is he more bothered now that I'm here? We know he got more bothered when the saddle got here but I don't think he's more bothered now that I'm here versus the saddle. Does that make sense? So that's good. You know, there's a level of hopefully a level of accepting the human. So I don't think he bucked you off. I think he tried to buck the saddle off. I bet he kept bucking after you came off, didn't he? Yeah. Two or three times. Yeah. He was bucking more from the saddle. He got tight when he saw that thing. You may have made it a little worse getting tight, but it really wasn't personal to you. It was more the saddle the cinches. So this is more about getting him used to feeling claustrophobic and less about him accepting the rider more. So literally we're going to, you could make a big difference with him by fixing that stuff on the ground. That's again, why I'm saying not riding him is like not ride him ever, not ride him until we get these things better on the ground. You know, when we do these sessions, it's like you, you there's like an expectation. If I was at home right now, I wouldn't be riding him. I probably wouldn't ride this horse for two weeks. I would get all this stuff on the ground or cleaned up because there's a much bigger risk me riding him today in the mental state he's in today than what he would be in in two weeks of getting him softer and more comfortable with everything. Does that, do you see what I'm saying? You know, people want to look at it as, did you ride him or didn't you ride him? It, it, and it's not like that. It's the same horse, whether, you're, whether I'm on the ground or here, he's the same animal. I'm in a different position now. And this position is more hazardous to our health should he get bothered and come unglued. So I would rather ex test and expose everything on the ground than get on a ride. Now you brought him five hours away to do all stuff and I'm not, I don't get to ride him. I don't get to keep working with him every day after this. So I wanna see kind of if there's anything that I'm missing. So I'm gonna go ahead and ride him and, and see what we got. But that, that's my point that I'm trying to make about the groundwork preparation is just helping him be a little less troubled. Um, just kind of getting him used to that stuff a little bit more. He's pretty flinchy though. <laughs> And now he probably got scared too when you came off of him. So it's, there's a little bit of to be expected there. Yeah, he's pretty tight. I keep wanting to think he's going to be more okay with everything than he is based on what you told me. But what he's telling me is that he's not okay with, <laughs> now see there he licked and chewed. But just me asking, going from sitting on him to asking him for a step, he's like, <gasps> there he's settling. You see the head coming down a little bit. There he's, he's kind of settling. But when you probably stepped him off that day, he, he probably had the um, tight and then it just took one little other thing to come out. You know, because you see what he's doing now. See him dropping his head. 
See, now he switched mental states. So if you guys watching this video, go back and watch when I first stepped him off, how he looked, and then look at how he's walking off now. It's a, very, it's a different mental state altogether, okay? Now, this is the mental state that you're safe to ride in. The question is, what does it take to bring him out of this mental state? Does it take trotting? Does it take cantering? Does it take a rope on the ground? <laughs> if it, all it takes is a little rope being on the ground, then that's not very high tolerances, right? Um, and that's why I said, I don't mind riding him because I feel like I can probably talk him out of it and I can help him recover if he gets troubled. I think, I could be wrong. He could buck me off too. <laughs> um, but I've ridden enough horses that I feel like I could help get it work, you know, ride him through it if he got tight, just like he did there. I just took my time and I just w wiggled him forward. I didn't kick him and, you know, pull on him harder or something. And then he got, then he got more relaxed. And so now, now he's a little bit more in riding horse mode. I, to me, he doesn't know, he doesn't fully understand pressure. He's kind of gotten through some things. Um, and he doesn't know as well as he could how to recover if he gets troubled. You see him shaking his head there, winding down. That's him coming off adrenaline. So the, also the interesting thing is he's gotten more comfortable with me riding him really than he probably ever was on the ground. Yo, he makes you feel like you wouldn't, if, if somebody came in the door and was like, hey, Ryan, like an old friend, I'd be like, hey. Do you hear that? Yeah. So again, riding him, getting on him and riding him has helped him get more comfortable than, than the ground. And the, the talking thing that you're saying, A, I'm desensitizing it to him as I'm talking here on the video. But B, again, that's another example of the rope. It's like, a rope shouldn't cause him to run sideways on the ground. These are all holes in his training. Like he, people probably like after you saying that to me, well, that makes me think, I don't know if this is true. So if previous owner watching the video, <laughs> I don't know this for fact or not, but what I'm thinking is when people are riding him, they probably, and I won't feel like I want to do that too. I want to get real quiet up here because I don't want to bother him and set him off. But really what we should do is get on here and be like, Hey, big guy. And this is what I would do if he was in training. I wouldn't get up here and just sit real quiet. Today I'm trying to get along with him making the video and, and, and just testing things out a little bit. But you, you know, some people call it a hey Bob horse where you go, hey Bob, and they, and they take off. You know, you don't wanna, he's a little bit of a hey Bob horse, you know. And that's where, again, to me, this is all foundation stuff. This is stuff that I cover in my beginning program so that it's less dangerous when we're sitting on them. I'm not a bronc rider. I know how to train and get them out of that, but I don't ride enough bucking horses to get good at it. And so I have to learn how to get horses more gentle under saddle, you know. So we just finished the training session here, and now I just want to kind of get Pam's reaction. Was there anything that surprised you um, in that session? Uh, I, I think the, the on again, off again, where he'd come down, mm. and then all of a sudden from out of nowhere. I'm not, I'm not surprised, but I'm surprised. Like I had hoped that was a one-time deal. Yeah. You know, what, what I experienced, I had hoped that was a one-time deal. So just seeing him, like, come down and be okay and then boom not be okay for little things like you were saying little yeah. stuff yeah um what do you think was the main thing you learned about how to handle him and continue training moving forward i need to be more aware of where he is like you often say in other videos you know that work with the horse you have right here right now and i didn't dial in that day i had goals and i was like we're doing this this and this i have a list and you know not to that's do a, that. that's a really good point yeah. yeah not to do that don't do that like make sure you're listening and make sure you're responsive and and work, to, work with the horse where they're at yeah versus what your list was or agenda was that day. that's a good point point. and to do what you said like if if you can't ride today because it's not a good idea don't don't do it like yeah. don't have those kind like you got to have goals right but have yeah. goals that make sense and then know when to yeah be done yeah if there's if we have instincts <laughs> for a reason right if there's something inside us saying it might not be the best time to get on that horse you should be listening to that. A lot of us, our ego gets us to power through that, and we say, "Oh, well, we have to ride," or "I'm a, I'm a, um, you know, I'm a coward if I don't ride them," or something like that. 
And we, we really need to not listen to that. We need to listen to our instincts. And I'm trying to get better at that myself, you know, because it's easy to, to want to write them no matter what for the video or whatever it is. Um, but I really try to try to make calculated decisions um, about that. So if you are feeling that, it's time to get off. You can play with them on the ground until something changes and then right. get back on. <laughs> so, yeah, listen to those instincts. So moving forward, um, my recommendation to Pam is going to be to put him in training. Um, I'm going to work with her to find a, a local professional that I that we both feel comfortable with that we think can help. Unfortunately, my barn is completely full where I don't have any more room to take him in. Otherwise, I would love to continue helping you out with him. Um, so we're going to continue the training and then kind of see um, how much progress he can make from there and make a plan from there. So we're going to keep working at this and uh, hopefully we'll be able to keep you guys posted. All right, well, thank you guys for watching, and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one.